loved your song. I think you got that right. We're going to miss you. <laughs> Welcome parents, friends and family, faculty and staff, CA students, and a very special welcome to our seniors, the class of 2023. I'm Faye Schutzer, and on behalf of the Concord Academy Board of Trustees, I want you to know we are so proud of you and excited to be with you today. As a member of the class of 1965 myself, I look forward to welcome you, welcoming you as members of fellow alums of CA. Over the past few years, I've prepared for remarks at commencement by looking at the group dynamics of each graduating class. As a psychologist, I've always been especially interested in group process. The roots of my interest in psychology began here at CA in a course called Community Service that had a reading list that introduced concepts in developmental psychology and personality theory. I was fascinated by the readings, and um, so when a term paper was required in chemistry class, I took a risk, and I chose to do a paper on the chemical basis of schizophrenia. I was even taken to Harvard's medical school library for the research. My passion, like so many other CA students, was no problem for our faculty, who have always and still encouraged students to pursue their own areas of interest. But coming back to the present and thinking about your class, 2023, it's worth naming that you did not exactly have a typical four years together when you would have had the opportunity to develop as a group. You started out okay in ninth grade until well, that was 2019, but in March of 2020, and the global pandemic hit, 
um, that changed everything. And during the next two and a half years, um, you were at first physically distanced, then some of you returned to campus, but not everyone could be here. And those who were here could only show their eyes, not their smiles. And it's clear that no CA class before you or since has had exactly your experience, starting together, being separated, and adapting to many changes, such as three heads of school, three academic schedules, and then finally, in your senior year, having the experience at CA that you were meant to have four times over. So I wonder, how has that impacted you, class of 2023? So back to my research for this morning. I did not go to a medical library, or actually any library. I did not read a book, not even an advanced copy of your yearbook, which would have been a good idea. Um, but instead, I conducted some interviews with experts. You might be wondering which experts and where could I find any experts around here on adolescent theory and development, and where could I find experts on you in particular? Well, my experts are with us today, um, and they include a sample of parents, faculty, administrators, members of your class, and even one head of school. What was most remarkable about my findings was that the data was very consistent. The words that came up most often were resilient, optimistic, authentic leaders, patient, energetic, and full of joy. Others mentioned CA is stronger because of this class, referring to the way that you understood traditions in your first six months on campus in ninth grade, and you managed to share them with the rest of the school, preserving the culture that was interrupted by the COVID pandemic. Your chapels, I'm told, were especially powerful and dealt with a wide range of themes that touched the whole community. You reached out in new ways, trying to bring about change, speaking with raw honesty and authenticity. Your diversity is an incredible source of strength. Ultimately, you talked a lot about hope, and you strike the adults around you as optimistic to your core. Everyone I spoke to commented on how, despite headwinds and a shorter time on campus, you navigated difficulty and emerged as leaders of the school after the junior leadership retreat. One parent said, this class represents the best of CA. CA is stronger because they are rebuilders of themselves and of the community. A faculty member commented, it's a class that's very good to each other which is generally a CA characteristic, but a particular feature this year. So I'm wondering, is there any balance? Apparently, you can be bold and even silly, and you're not afraid to push the envelope at times. Of course, you got up to a little mischief, and there were comments such as about the senior coffee house apparently with some unforgettable dancing. <laughs> Your class even received a complaint or two. You apparently kicked the head of school out of the gym at least once. <laughs> and you, you even barricaded him from his office on senior prank day. I've had a discussion with him about when he's planning on having head of school prank day. And oh, yeah, did you really dunk him too? On a chilly early May day when he was only coming out to cheer on his colleagues? Were you even just a little worried you might not get your diplomas today? <laughs> but seriously, back to the comments. My experts were all profuse in their praise 
and indicated that this, is a, this class is a special group of thoughtful young people who are going to make a difference in the world. It's clear you've already done that at Concord Academy. Congratulations, class of 2023. Come back soon. Thank you. Seniors have asked me this morning to gritty dance. That's a no. The seniors have asked me to say something else, which is the uh, Celtics and seven. I said it. Good day, fellow humans. Good day, fellow humans. And welcome home. What a good looking crowd we have with us here today, especially our seniors. You all look awesome. A warm and hearty CA welcome to our families and friends who traveled near and far to be with here be with us here today for this special occasion. Another welcome and thank you to all CA faculty, trustees, and our alumni, alumni community. Faye, thank you for your remarks this morning and for all of your transformational leadership and guidance of CA over the years. You have been an inspiration for all of us, and I don't expect that to change any time soon. Can we give Faye a round of applause? Seniors, the countdown is no longer in days as you reminded us at announcements in the PAC over the last few months. In less than an hour, you will inch ever so closely toward a new kind of independence. But as you have heard me say a few times this year, run, don't hurry. These next few years are about careful exploration and risk-taking. As a parent of a 19-year-old, Bryce, and 21-year-old Brooklyn. I'm qualified to give advice, and I hope you will listen to me more than my son and daughter. <laughs> Just kidding. They always listen to me. Can I ask every parent, grandparent, or guardian who would like to please stand or raise your hand with us and be recognized? If you don't already know this, you are superheroes in this movie where your children are the main characters. <laughs> Seniors, your superheroes will continue to serve you beyond your time at CA. The simple truth is that you are all stuck with us for life. And that's a great thing because we all really love you. As I recall, the college years require a lot of dependence in the areas of food, money, and laundry. <laughs> Based on several visits back to campus for an untold number of alums, I anticipate and hope that you will return to CA early and often. Remember, CA will always be your home. When you return, you will visit with former advisors, teachers, coaches, and other faculty who will welcome you with warm arms and curiosity about your journey. Be ready to share. We can't wait to listen and guide where necessary. I predict at the same time, I predict, I predict that, time will, that time away will likely remind you all of the special connections shared between adults 
and students in the CA community. You have been guided by a faculty who have walked beside you on your learning journey every step of the way. Please join me in honoring CA's faculty and staff. Some, but not all of you, may know that we have some super special and unique traditions at CA, like the senior song you just witnessed. Another tradition is that our commencement does not include any awards, prizes, or diplomas with distinction. Over 70 years ago, headmistress Josephine Tucker did away with awards in deference to our shared love of learning and focus on the process and transformation over the product and transaction of school. This tradition allows us to honor each student and is one of the many admirable qualities at CA. Of course, some ceremonial traditions persist. This morning, truly special speakers will share words of wisdom with our seniors, and then we will present each one with a Concord Academy diploma. Seniors, it was an honor to stand in the back of the chapel or listen outside to your words over the course of the year. I am confident that you have been blessed with some of the best educators in the world. And it is also true that we have been blessed to have some of the most thoughtful and passionate students anywhere. Every chapel talk, your words inspired us to reflect, be vulnerable, persist. They were funny, they were humble, the challenges presented by the last four years are well documented, but your resilience in times of adversity will set you apart in years to come. Remember, diamonds are cultivated under intense pressure and they take time to form, but in the end, they shine in the brightest lights. In a few minutes, you will join 6,126 diamonds or alumni and alumni shining their light in the world by making an impact in their community for the people they serve. We are forever grateful for all you did to impact CA during your time, and we are overjoyed to honor you here today. I would now like to invite this year's student head of school to come forward to share some remarks with you and to celebrate his peers. The Concord Academy class of 2023, please welcome Jay Tawar. Good morning, faculty, staff, friends, family, guardians, and the class of 2023. I'd like to start off by handing out thank you notes to everyone in the class. You all deserve it. There's our round two. Gratitude is important. <clears throat> All right, now that, now that that's done, for the past couple of days, I've been looking over everyone's chapels from this year. I'm gonna share a handful of quotes, around 18, from my peers' chapel talks that encapsulate the wisdom I heard this year. Unfortunately, I can't share the wonderful words of everyone in this ceremony, but I want, to know, I want you to know that I looked through each and every text and found something remarkable in all of them. I invite you to find at least one quote that resonates with you. And so here it goes, in no particular order. Number one, you will never be the best. Among the eight billion people in the world, there will always be someone more skilled, someone with cooler ideas, someone faster, someone stronger, someone who learned it better, someone better. 
But here's another fact. You don't need to be the best. Number two. I realized during this time that locksmithing is actually like solving a puzzle <laughs> blindfolded. <laughs> All you can rely on is the small click of a pin and the difference in pressure you feel as the pins bind into place to tell you that you're headed in the right direction. Number three. Fear is a fascinating thing. It is one of the most natural, powerful, and primitive human emotions. Number four, every door has a key, and every problem has a solution, but sometimes the solution is to let it be. Number five, next to my bedroom door, I have a small sign that says, today will be awesome. <laughs> Number six, throw yourself into things you're so passionate about, you can spend hours on them, and they don't feel like work, even if things aren't going smooth sailing. Number seven, it's not the destination, it's the journey that matters. What's often going to happen is that you won't you want accomplish your dreams. Yes, your dreams won't come true. Something greater will. Number eight, it doesn't matter if your socks match. <laughs> Number nine, in hindsight, I realized that my experiences and moves, however difficult at the time, are a privilege. My experiences are what makes me, me, and I'm grateful for the perspectives they offer. Number 10, life isn't about surviving in the storm, it's about dancing in the rain. Number 11, if you don't pull up a weed from the root, it'll just continue to grow back and consume your garden until you eventually do. Treat yourself like a garden. Number 12, it was at this very moment that the headmaster imparted to me the advice that would change my life forever. He casually leaned over and whispered in my ear, son, keep moving. <laughs> Number 13, there will be hard roads ahead, <clears throat> coming up ahead, but don't worry, because everything that has happened in your life so far has already prepared you for it, so enjoy living every day. Number 14, You'll miss out on a lot if you live in fear of change. After all, change is the only constant in life. Number 15, if something isn't fun, make it fun. Number 16, like a summer sunset drive with every window down, the sunroof too, those rides are made special by the people in the car, the ones along the ride for you. Number 17, Plus, there's so much beauty and joy in imperfections, in the cracks of the pavement where flowers grow, and in, and in misshapen fruit and scribbly handwriting and crooked teeth and little kids learning to ride bicycles. And finally, number 18. If you're honest, people may deceive you. Be honest anyway. If you're kind, people may accuse you of selfishness. Be kind anyway. All the good you do today will be forgotten by others tomorrow. Do good anyway. To CA's faculty and staff, words cannot express our gratitude for each one of you. You have already changed this world and changed our world. And finally, to the class of 2023, congratulations you all. It's truly been an honor serving as your student head of school for the past year. I love you all very much. <laughs> All right, and uh, in classical J fashion, we're going to end with a poem. <laughs> wow, look at how time flies. It seems like just yesterday that I was the size of French fries. But now I'm a bit more tall and a bit more wise. My endless gratitude goes to CA and all of you guys. It's been a blast to poetize. I hope we can enjoy some time to reflect together during a musical interlude by Concord Academy's uh, chorus. Thank you.
you, Jay, um, and good morning, everyone. Today, I am thrilled to have the opportunity to introduce to you our 2023 commencement speaker. Our speaker today is one who strives for equity, affinity, and inclusion. He is an activist who has committed his career to, quote, building an army of change agents, end quote. Someone who advocates for a more just world, a world we want to live in. Today, we will hear from Andre Robert Lee. <laughs> Lee is an award-winning filmmaker, keynote speaker, consultant, writer, and educator. Films he has directed and or produced include the documentary, I'm Not Racist, Am I? An award-winning short film series for Paramount TV called Virtually Free, which tells the story of incarcerated youth in Richmond, Virginia. And The Road to, Injust and the Road to Justice, which documents the civil right tour rights tours he led throughout the American South for more than 15 years. Lee is a storyteller. He has directed the short documentary, First Hand, Realizing Your Full Potential Through STEM, as well as directed and produced the television series, This Is Life with Lisa Ling for CNN. He is currently developing a documentary series on mental health programs within the California Department of Education. His projects are dynamic, far-reaching, and impactful. Lee's impact extends all across the United States. He has collaborated with the New York City Public Schools, the Ford Foundation, Diana Ross, and the media organizations Miramax Films, BET, Universal PBS, HBO, Sundance, Picture House, and DreamWorks. Through purposeful collaboration and creative engagement, Lee's work both challenges and expands our understanding of ourselves and the world. He studied history at Connecticut College and education at Tufts. Lee teaches filmmaking at the Germantown Friends School and has also served as a professor of writing at the University of Pennsylvania's Wharton School. He sits on the board of directors at the Mi Kwan School and is the namesake of the Andre Robert Lee Fellowship, which is dedicated to providing financial grants, mentorship, and leadership opportunities. Andre Robert Lee serves as an incredibly inspiring role model and could not be more aligned with Concord Academy's mission statement. He cultivates empathy, integrity, and responsibility to build a more just and sustainable future. We are lucky to have him here with us today, so please join me in welcoming Andre Robert Lee to Concord Academy. Okay. Awesome. So good morning. Good morning. Yes, that's great. I grew up in a Southern Baptist church. I like call and response. Um, so I'm really excited to be here with you all this morning. I want to first express my gratitude uh, for the invitation to join you all this morning. I recognize this as a great honor and privilege. As I, re as I reflect upon this wonderful morning, I ask the question, how did I get here? Gwen, Ruth, Eugenia, Juanita. These are, the name, these are the names of four incredible women that raised me and shaped me to be the person that I am today. I want to call into this space and recognize all my ancestors. I ask them to stand with me as I make an effort to communicate and share with you and everyone here. I want you all to know more about how I came to be here, standing in front of you today. We all have ancestors. I believe they are here with us in many ways. I am the descendant of enslaved people. With the little research I have been able to do, it still gets murky. I do know my grandparents on both my parental, my father and mother's side, um, but didn't go much further than that. I want to tell you all about my paternal grandmother. She was a woman named Juanita Marcus. She was a quiet and mysterious woman. Recently, I've been reflect, reflecting on the fact that I never heard her say the word parent. I never heard her talk about a mother or a father. I know she had to have each, but it was simply never discussed. In her late 20s, she packed up her kids and moved to Philadelphia. Her kids were my mother, my mother's sister, my mother's brother. She migrated from Winston-Salem, North Carolina, 
I don't know the exact circumstances that led to her jetting from the, north, from the south to the north. I can imagine, but I never got specifics. I did ask, but I was never told. I do know that the backbreaking work she did in the northern factory where she found work while in Philadelphia was a step up and an improvement from the harsh working conditions and the sharecropping fields she was rumored to have worked in in the south. She didn't talk about her past much. I imagine it was dark, terrifying, and horrible in many ways. I also have to believe there was joy. I feel that joy because somehow, some way, I'm here in front of you right now today. It is no small moment that I'm standing here in front of you. Concord Academy is now 100 years old. More about that in a personal reference to a significance later. Today marks the 99th commencement to, um, for Concord Academy. And I love the word commencement. It comes from the late French, late, comes from, it, comes from the, it comes from the late 13th century. The old French word was commencement. The modern French word is commencier. We use it to describe the ceremony we find ourselves in right now. For many, it is thought as the end, the final moment, time to say goodbye. It does have that energy, but the denotation of the word is the beginning of something. And that is what today is. On this 100th anniversary of Concord Academy, I think I'm right where I, we are supposed to be. Also, I like surprises. And I like being surprised by surprises. Let me explain. Not that one. Um, <laughs> I came across one of them, a surprise, while thinking about what, to, uh, what it meant to be here today. I want to talk just briefly, bear with me, about Little Women. I bet every person that comes to visit Concord Academy mentions the book or one of the movies. Today I'm thinking about Louisa May Alcott, and this is a surprise connection, but a quick aside. So I went to a school similar to Concord Academy that was mentioned. It's a private school in Philadelphia uh, called Germantown Friends School. I went there on a scholarship. I attended a basketball reading clinic after graduating from my Catholic elementary school. To be clear, the camp was basketball and reading. I was terrible at basketball. <laughs> terrible, terrible, terrible. Um, I was 14 and no one had ever taught me how to do a layup. I excelled for half of the day. I did win a prize at the end of the camp though for being best camp reader. <laughs> I, got a copy of, I got a copy of Ursula K. K uh, I got a copy of Ursula K. Le Guin's The Arm of the Starfish. I loved that book. I did not love the status of being the biggest dork at camp. This was pre-dot-com, nerd culture was not as celebrated as it has been today, as it is today. And also, this was the summer where I was no longer going to be the last player picked for a scrimmage. Let me explain to you what was happening at the camp. We had a thing called the word of the day. At the beginning of the day, the word of the day was used in a sentence. During the end of the day, we had a scrimmage. And during that scrimmage, the coach would blow the whistle and say the first team to use the word of the day would get bonus points. So for the first time ever, I was actually like a second or third pick. <laughs> Bonus. Um, now back to Louisa May. GFS is in the Germantown section of Philadelphia. Louisa May Alcott was born across the street from Germantown Friends School at 5425 Germantown Avenue. The setting of Little Women was based on her childhood home, which is about one mile from here. Her family made the trek from Philadelphia to Concord after she was born. That surprised me. I thought, this is not the connection moment right here. I don't think it's a mistake. I believe it's fate that I'm here in front of you right now. The ancestors have taken care of me in all kinds of incredible ways. Juanita Marcus's migration, hard work, and sacrifice landed me here. I doubt she read Little Women, nor understood Quaker education, but she knew her boy was special and needed education to have it easier than she did. The woman who never said much and never talked about her parents or past had vision and foresight that led me here today. A lot happened 100 years ago. The Lincoln Memorial turned one year old, and get this one, on May 28th, 1923, it was determined that it was legal for women of the United States to wear trousers, right? Walt Disney was also created. 
and the first Concord commencement was held outdoors in the gardens back of the academy buildings. There were just a handful of students graduating from this all-girls school that today, that day rather, and look at us now. Change and growth are hard, but we must accept them both as we move forward and through life. It's important to note that change and growth relate in a cause and effect dynamic. History is riddled with moments of change that didn't feel like growth until time had done its work and gifted us of all her, his, their. See how you use these pronouns? I'm gonna say that again. History is riddled with moments of change that didn't feel like growth until time had done its work and gifted us all his, her, their most profound gift, hindsight. I believe that much in our current moment will follow the same legacy. As books are being banned and restrictions are being placed on people's minds and bodies, it's hard to feel like this is a moment of growth or change in any positive way. But we must be optimistic about what it can yield. It is only through hindsight, hindsight that we will be able to see the change and growth of our, of our current moment clearly. But if the masses of individuals across the country who choose to speak truth to power are any indication, there is reason for hope and optimism. My grandmother, Juanita Marcus, one day witnessed me saying something that was off color, inappropriate. I was a teenager. I don't remember what I said, but I do remember her response and message. She said that I needed to think before I just came out my mouth. The message was simple and clear. Think before you speak. Think before you speak. Personally, I think that is what being woke is all about. But let's not get caught up in nomenclature. We all have said things we wish we had not, have thought a little bit more before we blurted them out. It is one of the many things we all have in common as humans. The lesson from my grandmother was one of my most powerful ones. I give it to you. How many times have you won an argument in the shower? Right? You remember, you remember what you could have said in a tough moment. I offer this, when possible, pause. It's kind of magic. Think about your response and exercise those critical skills. Let me say it again. Think about your response and exercise those critical skills you have been trained to use over the past four years at Concord in your everyday life. It works, trust me. As you are about to enter new spaces and experiences, let's discuss the power of the word no. I have received some very hard no's in my life. I've been passed over for jobs, opportunities, acceptances, experiences that I was sure I deserved. My films have been rejected from numerous film festivals. Every single one of those no's was the correct no. They all led to the greater and better moments of yes. One of the most incredible jobs I had was working as Diana Ross's personal assistant in my 20s. Yeah, baby. Sounds like you know her. One of her biggest hits was I'm Coming Out. She's a darling in Motown. Add her to your playlist. She has some great tunes. My time with Miss Ross the Boss was just a short gig, but it was incredible. I could tell stories, but I signed a fierce non-disclosure agreement. <laughs> oh, God, I have stories. Um, I will share this, though. Miss Ross the Boss fired me six times. <laughs> I had not been fired for many jobs prior to that moment. Each firing was met with a call the next day with an invitation to come back. I would return, go back, and do it again. The last time she fired me was after we were sitting in a meeting. We had been going over some materials. She looked up and said, baby, you don't need to be someone's assistant. You are creative and have stories to tell and things to make. You must go out in the world and make. I pushed back and pleaded, saying, I understand working with her as an important stepping stone, the folks who call her house on a daily basis alone was incredible. I am so proud of this moment, kind of. I put the king of pop on hold multiple times a day as he called his godmother. <laughs> this is another one. She also lived down a block from a former president of the United States. He had two golden retrievers that would come to Miss Ross's gate every morning, wagging their tails, looking at her, looking at her gate, looking at me, saying, save us. Um, <laughs> I would walk them back up the road to the home, I got it. I would, want to be in this, I, would, I would want to be in this boss's house as opposed to the other one. It was an incredible experience to work with her. But in that meeting, she pushed back again and she said, baby, I need to release you. 
And as I rode the train home, I thought about the job and Ms. Ross's words. They were hard to hear, but true. When she called the next day and invited me back, I said no. I explained that I thought she was right. I needed to be on my own and creating. I walked away from what felt like a grand opportunity, but it was the right thing to do. My career has been fabulous, and I owe much of that to what she saw in me and what she insisted I become and be. I'll conclude with one factoid about one of my heroes, Bayard Rustin. I hope you know who he is, but I won't be surprised if some of you do not. He was the architect of the civil rights movement. At the 1963, Washington, at the 1963 March on Washington that took place in front of the Lincoln Memorial, he gave the first 45 minute long speech that framed the day. He also organized the march in numerous clever, brilliant ways. One of his strategies for the day was to place plain clothes policemen that were people of color inside the march and put white officers in uniforms outside the march. The whole idea was let's reduce the conflict and keep things peaceful. And to this day, we can report there were no major incidents at the march. That's one of the many things he did to make the, the day successful. Russell also gave us a phrase that, I'll use, that I still use to this day. He was first person to, to suggest that we need to speak truth to power. It sounds like an obvious platitude, doesn't it? Especially in times in like these we are in right now. That's the ancestors, you hear that? <laughs> speak truth to power. Nowadays, people hear that and they think it's probably synonymous with a Twitter rant. But when Rustin said it, when, when Rustin said speak truth to power, it wasn't about public decorations for the sake of vanity. It wasn't a call to the masses. It was a call to each of us as individuals to ensure that those in power can't pacify us into complacency. When we're complacent, we lose sight of the glaringly obvious. We're all in this together. When systems of power make us lose sight of that, they grow stronger. Speaking truth to power means harnessing our individual conviction that we are stronger together. When head of school Henry Fairfax called and asked me to give the 99th commencement address to the Concord Academy community, right away I started thinking about what I was gonna do and what I wanted to say. And of course my social media started algorithming me with images and clips of the greatest graduation speeches ever. I did my best to ignore all those uh, and, and do what I had to do. I wanted to craft something for this community, for this day. I thought the significance of the fact that Henry is calling me to speak to y'all was incredible. I jokingly said to him that we could just stand up front and say 100, and that'd be the whole tweet. <laughs> I, spoke to a very, I spoke to a very successful artist friend of mine about it, and he said, just chat GPT it. <laughs> yeah, I was like, nah. Um, this is good work that Juanita Marcus prepared for me, for, excuse me, prepared me for. I've come with a meeting of my heart and mind in an effort to express and encourage love as a way forward. That is, why we, that, is, that is how and the way we can achieve change. As stated earlier, I believe that with a an army of change agents, we can turn this world around. We can reduce all the isms. So the big message and takeaway is love. Gwen, Ruth, Eugenia, Juanita, all love me. They're not here in the physical form, but they're here in the most important form. They're within me. They're with us. I want to guess, I want, I'm getting choked up. I want to say again how humble and inspired I am to be invited to spend this significant occasion with you, all of you making a 100 year legacy. My ancestors made it so that I could be here today. Your ancestors made it so you can be here today. The school is ready for the new world because of your participation, contributions, and presence. This is your commencement. Let's go. Our ancestors are waiting. Thank you.
CA is a special place. Only at CA can our commencement speaker show up in jeans and Jordans. Um, and, I, and I approve that, so it's good stuff. Uh, Andre, thank you for your wisdom and your inspiring words. We're so fortunate to have you here with us today. And, and I'm confident that each and every one of us who witnessed your speech and felt your ancestors um, will never forget it. And so thank you again. Uh, that, was, that was awesome. That was special. So now, are we ready to pass out the diplomas? Are we sure? Sure? Let's do it. At CA, we award diplomas randomly rather than in alphabetical order. It's a practice that keeps both the graduating class and the audience on alert. <laughs> and it allows us to honor each graduate with a moment of recognition and applause. Be aware that we have professional photographers well positioned to take photos for you. So you don't need to leave your seats to try to capture the moment. Finally, before we begin, let me explain the sock. <laughs> Why do we have a Nike? This is a nice, this is a nice sock. <laughs> the sock is filled with money contributed by each member of the graduating class with a little extra surprise thrown in by the alumni community, alum community. The last senior to receive a diploma is also awarded the sock. <laughs> Let me now ask Elise Ruiz Selsky and Will Tucker, senior class advisors, to come forward to assist. Jerry Cheeson Zong. <laughs> Mia Power. Liam McMichael O'Brien. <laughs> William Dean Turner. Connor Wynn Keneally. <laughs> Gabriel Wyatt Fernandez. Annie Grace McGarry. <laughs> Diana Lisboa Daher.
Colton Timothy Largay. Liam Salerno. That was my Celtics and seven friend. Lisa Mars Marie B2. Matthew David Gutierrez. <laughs> Aisha Aina Tassa. Claire Carson. <laughs> Hugo Emmanuel Marquise. Benjamin Nelson Fleischman. Alexander William Eckford. Some of us like taking photos, some of us don't. <laughs> Peter Elliot Chrisoff Bem. Caden <laughs> Nicholas. Natalie Schmidt. Check out Caden's tie today. Maya Jean Khalil. Betsy Corin Norris. <laughs> Juliet Sinkus. Emma Thompson Somo.
Shaheen Samadi Aibari. Isabella Marie Combi Selden. Lucy Norton Baker. Christina Elise Crowley. Madison Lee McCaslin. Sanaya Siobhan Adams. Kazimir Barovich. Alicia Chang. <laughs> Cosette Yudi Wong. Brennan Allen Thompson. <laughs> Joshua Yunte Lee. Archie Daphner. John O. Nyan Koi Dang. Term Seapasat Tong. Term Seapasat Tong. Zana Baraktari Schwab. <laughs> Selene Taribio.
Samuel Eduardo Duque. Christian Omar Settlesing Nazair. <laughs> Isabella Y. Hun Ginsburg. Faba Bafels. <laughs> Kellen Kiecha. Xiao Zheng Sam Lu. <laughs> Ashton Demetrius Moda. Margo Ruby Buchanan. John Carlisle McKee. Phoebe Davis Fritz. <laughs> Esme Livia Joan DeCola. Eduardo Giovanni Bertici Tokash. <laughs> Jayet Tawar. Gianna Heaven McIntosh. <laughs> Vincent Liao. Eric Shu Lin. Yeah, 
Lucas Matthew first. <laughs> Maitri Bethany. Victoria Welch Adams. <laughs> Serena Olivia Agarwal. Torin Alec Pelton Flavin. <laughs> Joanne Jenso O. Ava Grashku. <laughs> Charles Redmond Badger. Amisha Pani. <laughs> Thomas Michael Christie Israel. Nathan David Vanchelbum Rothschild. <laughs> Lena Nishikawa Cantor. Camilla Brecken. <laughs> Charles Zimmerly Seston. Henry Styles Hall. <laughs> Twenty left after this one. <laughs> Maya Katrine Monahan.
William Alexander Gladstone. Dex Crosby Plunkett. Ella Rose Fogelman. <laughs> Shaylin Salcedo. Cecilia Wong. <laughs> Julia Francis Ravenscroft Barrow. Grace Ting Chen. <laughs> Catherine Hamilton Tran. Anastasia Vivian Jacobs. <laughs> Getting close after this one is 10. Matilda King Chartner. Those of you in the back can't see what's going on, but they're shuffling the diplomas. It's actually pretty cool. There's integrity there, common trust. <laughs> Sophie Dornstein. <laughs> Luna Cabrera. Neva Elizabeth Rosa Gonzalez. I'm not sure what sign I just put up, but I hope it was good. Jideon Wong. And then there were five after this. Diego Emilio Alonzo. Everett Ross Dalton. Joao Enrique Esquinamares Martins. <laughs> 
Frank Montenegro. Deja Bob. Anton Crawford. Class of 2023, please stand up. Can we give one more hearty applause for this amazing class? To our new graduates, class of 2023, remember that we are always here for you. This is always home, now and forever. This concludes today's ceremony. Faculty and staff, you'll recess first, but one more time, just one more time. Let's congratulate this class of 2023 one more time. <laughs>